I'm ready to go, but I haven't got. Oh, here we are, here we are. I've got it. Oh, shit. The letters. Here for you, mate. Hines. Shit, mate. Candace is uh, there. Hello, mate. there, mate. Something oh. terrible's going on. You have to go and have a oh, bloody what? look at oh, it. Candace. Quick, go and have a look. Okay, no, okay, yeah, okay. Cool. Hey, hey, don't forget this one. Don't forget this one. Letters coming up soon. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Ah, I have usurped the chair of power. Mitch has gone away for a dirty weekend and here we are stuck to pick up the pieces as uh, we bring you tonight's letters. We've got some corkers in there tonight. We've got some fantastic people on the panel tonight as well. She's sexy, she's cute, she's popular to boot. Miss Shanae Maripodi. Hello, how are you going? Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, the Mayor of Bassendean, John Gangel, is with hello, us hello, after hello, a Candace. very busy week oh, for you, sir. Oh, yes, one I don't want to repeat any time soon, but uh, it's great to have a woman in the hosting chair. You know, I've been trained up by women, oh, so it's very wow. exciting. Well, apparently it's one of the first time, first time in about 10 years we've had a lady in the well, chair, so can it's I, about can time I just we, say I'm, I'm all about sisters, and uh, when I was hosting once, I had an all-women, all-female panel with me. Kudos to you. Not yeah. that the junk between our legs matters much, of course, <laughs> does it? No, absolutely not. All equal. <laughs> Matt Fuller from Fuller Fitness is here to uh, to bash out a couple of opinions <laughs> as per normal. How are you doing? Good, thanks, Candice. And uh, they'll be saying Gary who? Gary who? Mitch who? And artiste extraordinaire. You've got some beautiful works you've showed me just off camera. How are you doing, Alex? How are you doing? Touching me <laughs> What's Hello. up, Alex? What are you working on? Um, I'm doing, still doing that portrait of Michael Hutchins, and I've had someone contact me recently because they'd like a, a family portrait of himself and his wife and their baby. We'll have to, you know, get pictures, progress updates I'll bring and bring them, them on in, the show, I definitely. think. Definitely. Well, even for my own interest, whatever. Um, let's get straight into the first letter. This is from Tim in Aldana in South Australia. These crazy South Australians keep sending us letters, but thanks anyway. Dear panel, I have a really great girlfriend and we just adore each other. Last month, however, while I was at her house, I walked into an unlocked bathroom where I found her mum completely naked in the middle of giving herself a Brazilian. I couldn't help but freeze while staring at her. This woman is totally hot and utterly beautiful. I can't get her fantastic body out of my head. Now, while her initial reaction when I walked in was one of surprise, the lasting impression on me is that of the cheeky smile she offered as I quickly composed myself, apologised, stepped backwards and closed the door. Although I haven't seen her since, I haven't been able to get this woman out of my head. She is a single parent who knows how potent her body is and I really need some advice on either how to initiate some sort of casual sexual liaison or how to forget the best piece of ass I've ever found. I don't want to hurt my girlfriend and I certainly don't want her to find, find out I've begun to obsess about her mum and I know I will have to see her next month at our church annual fundraiser, <laughs> which is the opportunity to move on this. But what is it that I do here? Alex, what advice do you have for this scumbag? You sound like an idiot. <laughs> God. I mean, like, you've got a really great girlfriend and you, you adore her, so, but you... Her mother gave you a cheeky smile. I, I, you sound delusional as well. I mean, like um, casual sexual liaison. Just, what is it with men thinking that every woman wants them? You sound like a real idiot. And if your girlfriend knew that you were thinking that, she'd probably smack you across the head and close the door. I mean, oh, look, I can't. I, there's nothing more I can say. You're an idiot. <laughs> idiot. Um, Matt, it is the church fundraiser, the annual church event the place to go and get yourself a little bit of nookie, do you reckon? Well, it sounds like that's the place if you want something to rise, for sure. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Took me a second then, mate. Jesus, a bit slow. I mean, Look, Tim, what, nice but dim. What would, what would you do in his situation? Well, the first thing I would have done, if I, if I walked upstairs or into a bathroom and the door was shut, I'd probably knock. And then, you know, obviously... Yeah, that's true. obviously, it as it, Yeah, I think, you know, the, you know, if you're going in and the bathroom door's shut and the lights are on, you'd knock to see if there's someone in there, firstly. But look, poor Tim, it doesn't matter who pumps up the tyres, it's who rides the bike. So put, the, put it in the memory bank 
and make sure that um, your beautiful girlfriend stays that way and she's getting plenty of good loving. Does he deserve either of them? No. No, definitely not. No. I mean, everyone fantasises about somebody else, mm. right? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's what you do with that, isn't it? It's like if you cross the line, then there's no going back. So I think in this case, Tim needs to um, realise that he's got a beautiful girlfriend and, and stay exactly that. Keep it in the wank bank and move on. Exactly. Aha, uh -huh. what do you think there, honourable mayor fellow? Yes, well look, uh, look Tim, I uh, have to say, I thought Matt was about to say every every man fantasises about his mother-in-law, I thought that was a bit sick. Um, <laughs> and I actually think you're a bit sick as well, you're a bit sick and twisted actually I have to say. Uh, walking in uh, obviously on a woman uh, in, uh, in, obviously in, in complete undress uh, it is uh, apprehensible, uh, but then to go away and fantasise about it and then want to pursue it more, I, I think you're a little sick and twisted in the head personally and then, <laughs> then not only that, it, it, it then further shows how actually deluded you are and uh, I think uh, Alex put it very well, deluded. Um, you know, you want to you want to go get a little something something at the uh, at the annual church fundraiser. You, you, you're sick, Tim. You really are sick, and uh, and I uh, just uh, I worry for anybody in your company. He's going to hell. Saying that, John, like I hope you don't fantasise about your mother-in-law. You. Oh. Mine would death scare a hungry dog out of a butcher shop. <laughs> Someone's not going home because well, you're not watching I, I, this, I, 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 I tell you what, that would be breaking, breaking news if I ever fantasise about my mother-in-law. <laughs> Holy smokes. Well, but when it comes to, you know, being a man and, and, you know, having sexual thoughts, have you ever been so overcome by lust that you've had to take special measures to get something out of your head? Oh, what I, a question, I, right? I, 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 this, 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 this could come back to haunt me. Uh, <laughs> you can just I'll, say I'll, yes I'll, and leave I'll, it at I'll, that. I'll, I'll say that uh, I take all things in my stride. But how, how do you get, how do you move past it? How do you get it well, out of your so, system? You know, I'm a very busy person and something comes up and you've got to move on <laughs> to the next thing and uh, that's, the way, that's the way life rolls. So you, uh, you know, when something comes up, you obviously deal with it and then you move on to the, on to, uh, the next, uh, next uh, thing in your life. If we, put this, <laughs> if we put this in a nice way, time heals all exactly, wounds that's right. and bonus. Exactly, that's right, absolutely. Oh. Something else comes along, you see? Something oh. else comes along. Miss Maripodi, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, your thoughts, please? Well, I thought I was coming onto this show and I was going to be the nice person, but Tim, you dog. <laughs> <laughs> there is no one nice Tell way us what you really think, Maripodi. <laughs> well, I think Tim needs to walk away with his tail between his legs. He needs to leave this girlfriend because the poor thing does not need this and does not want to have to deal with this. If you're still fantasising about it, Go to the pub and find yourself another cougar. Leave the mother alone. Exactly. If you were the girlfriend, would you want to know? Yep. Oh, I think secrets are always going to come do. out. I don't really wouldn't want to know. W would you, no would you well, notice if a guy had eyes for your mum? Do you think you'd notice? Oh man, I'm just imagining my mum now in this situation. Does <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> Very <laughs> exact Hi, opposite. Mrs. Nice Hi, to see you. <laughs> although, although, would, would you know? I've heard sometimes, you know, there's some sort of, you know, you know, sometimes mother and daughter type things. Or that's just in porn, is it? I don't know. No, you don't I know? don't know. Maybe oh, you I don't know. I'm not either. That's why I'm asking. I'm Are asking. Are they going into an uncomfortable topic? It will not topic. end well. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, I. Yeah. It will not end well. That's probably a thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mother-in-law. Yeah. Mother-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. Mother yeah. mother that's what I'm asking. The mother-in-law. All right. Speaking of uncomfortable topics, we do have another one coming up after the break. Letter to more than a woman. More than a woman to everyone. Um, we'll tell you all about the letter from Nicholas from South Perth after the break. You came back. Thank you very much for joining us again. So we didn't completely suck the first time round. Let's see if we can make it better with letter two. But before we get to that, we want to tell you how you can write your very own letter to us. You can email us letters at sweetandsour.net.au. You can jump on the web to get all of our details as well. It's www.sweetandsour.net.au. Uh, Facebook, facebook.com forward slash sweet and sour. Jump on there and give us a like. And for all the twit and the twit bits and the tweets out there, you can jump on the Twitter bot and at Sweet and Sour TV. Tell us what you think about any of the episodes you see and or any of the panellists you see. But no, keep it no, nice no, no. if possible. For every letter that we do read out on the show that comes from your lovely selves, we will send you to the movies. See, we do make it worth your while. This week's movie, we're sending you to Calvary. Not Cavalry, Calvary. It's an Irish black comedy, apparently, according to Wikipedia. 
And we're sending you there courtesy of NRC Communications. Thanks very much to Natalie O'Shea, of course. Time for the next letter. Hi, Mitch and guests. Fail, my name's Candice. I was married for more than 25 years and had three very wonderful kids. My marriage broke up when my wife decided that it was time to tell me that none of the kids were mine. 10 years later, I'm still coming to terms with this in my head. I really want to sue someone, but the kids don't know any of this and I don't want to hurt them. At the time, we just agreed to tell the kids that we have decided to amicably split, nothing more. In all of this, my ex-wife has suffered no consequence whatsoever and remarried my previous best mate, who is the real father to my kids. I have lost half my assets, all my kids, all my peace of mind. When I hear that so many men are in this position, I just have to say that every child born from today on should be DNA tested. That will prevent any of this devastating game of charades from being played by malicious, self-serving, manipulative women that they are all capable of being, apparently. I think the law should be brought in immediately. Let's see what these feminists have got to say about this, Nicholas from South Perth, WI. Mate, you've picked, a, you've picked a show where there's a female host, haven't you? Well done. Um, Sinead Maripodi, what do you think? Well, I was about to say to Nicholas, Nicholas, let me get you a tub of ice cream because this is the worst thing ever. Then he said that I was capable of being manipulative and malicious and also and probably a feminist, which mm. I am neither. But no, Nicholas, this is probably the most horrible thing I've ever heard. Oh, I want to hope that he's not paying any payment for these children since they're not his and You'd hope they're so, yeah. his best friends. But do, does everyone need a DNA test? I think no, it's taking it a little bit far. I want to say that majority of women would not do this. It's a very unfortunate circumstance. There is no denying that. But no, I think DNA, DNA tests a little bit far. Oh yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with that. I don't, I don't feel like I'm manipulative much. No, you're not. <laughs> you're always well, very what, lovely. Oh, well, to your face anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what do you think there, um, there John? Um, oh. you know, do you know anyone that this has happened to? Look, no, not, not, not personally, but uh, it, it is an unfortunate situation. But all we need is love. And if you love the, uh, the children as if they were your own, what does it matter anyway? You've raised them as your own. They've probably got your traits and what have you growing up. It is absolutely dreadful. I would actually want to knock your best mate's uh, lights out if, um, if it was happening whilst, whilst uh, you were supposedly together and married. Uh, look, it is uh, yeah, it's shocking. I don't think we need to go to the extreme of DNA testing everybody. And if we're going to do that, we might as well keep the DNA. So we would better, better profile people for crimes and stuff in the future. Um, so I don't think uh, that actually needs to be brought in. And I don't think it's necessarily a feminist uh, issue that they're, they're going to obviously side. The feminists aren't necessarily going to side with, uh, with no. your former wife. I would say very few people would actually side with your, very, your former wife. In fact, uh, women, uh, as you've heard, will be outraged by this and the con conduct of this woman. So I actually think you, you, uh, you're, you deserve to apologise to all females for, uh, for offending <laughs> them with the last part of your, the, your little letter there, uh, uh, Nicholas. We'll say that he was emotional, though. He didn't mean it. Yes, that's right. He was yeah. having his man rag. Do you yeah. kind of feel like the children need to know? I don't think so. No, look, if the, if the, I mean, the children have a right to know. Um, whether, if they've grown up believing this bloke's they're their, their, uh, his, their, his, their father uh, and, uh, and he uh, is, is like a father to them still, then I don't think uh, you know, that, uh, that anything really needs to come out. Mm, Matt, what, do you, what consequence do you think the ex-wife should face, if any? Well, she sounds, Nicholas, like a right slut. This is probably the worst thing that could happen to a man and I, I can't agree with John because I think the kids need to know. Mm. But how does he know they're not his kids? Mm. Have, uh, have they had the DNA test That's yet? Right. That's right. So she could point. just be manipulating him mm. and saying, this is the reason. So he packs up and leaves and then she checks up with his mate. Yeah, right. Well, that, that's so not a scenario know. I'd thought well, of. Maybe they weren't having much sex and she was having sex with the mate. Well, he's married. That wouldn't be happening, would it? That's it. <laughs> well, well, you're sure that your kids are yours, obviously. Lovely Naomi well, would yeah. never do that to you. I would, I would hope so, but I did say it would be gutted. Of you course. Know, and you would want to, you'd feel like killing your wife. But I think in this case, he should get the kid's DNA test for his own well-being mm. because there might be a chance that the kids are actually his and she's, as I said, has turned the tables on him. Um, but I think the kids need to be told, you need to be honest. I totally agree with John saying that once you've loved a kid and you love them for 10 years old, you can't change that. 
And last word very quickly, Alex. Oh, right. Yes, it's always me right at the end. Um, listen, <laughs> Only I, think, once. I think that DNA testing is a really good idea um, because it gives you peace of mind and like, you know, what she did to you was terrible. And I, I can understand what he was saying. He's by, you know, malicious, self-serving, manipulative women. I mean, I'm just so over how women get all up in arms. Oh, I'm not like that. It's, it's got nothing to do with you. This man's writing about what he's experienced. So when he's but saying, he but there is, but there are, I know lots of women that are manip manipulative that have been with men that want men only for, to, to get what they want. They want a beautiful child. They want mm. a man that's going to provide them a big house and all that. I know women like that. I've had women say, oh, I knew what I wanted and I, I wanted a father to provide for my children and she's not with him anymore. So, you know, unfortunately there are manipulative women out there. Well, and so oh, my heart goes out to you. You need to get over it. Move on. Big sorries from everybody, but uh, you know, a range of solutions there. Coming up after the break, we're talking swearing on television, and who better to talk about it? We'll see you soon. I'm not always right, but I have a pretty good track record, so tune in to see what I've got to say. Excellent. Welcome back. This next letter does sound like it has been written by, uh, you know, an older member of our community and, and quite possibly, uh, you know, the reason for the letter, the swearing on television letter, Millicent from Coogee in New South Wales. It could be Coogee, however you like to say is fine with me, Millicent. Good. Dear panellists, yes, there is too much swearing on television and your show doesn't help the cause at all. I'd like to say sorry, but I won't. Television dictates our culture nowadays, and when every second show is full of dialogue expletives, it's the direct cause of a degraded level of conversation in our society. Television first taught us all that we should be pissed off, and now we are TV training our youngsters to just be pissed at everything. Never said pissed on TV before. <laughs> just because that's what the Americans have now determined to be a trendier version of this expression, which in my day, in my day, was just vulgar. Surely we should just eradicate swearing in all programming instead of allowing the conversational levels of our community to be dictated by gutter, lowest common denominator television. So clean it up and you people on the panel can start the move now to end swearing on the telly and perhaps make viewing the joy that it used to be 20 years ago. And I know that Millicent will have a supporter on the panel, but first of all, we're going to go to you. I don't think you're particularly filthy mouth there, John. Oh, I don't think so. I don't no. think you are. No, well, you know, I haven't said too much. You know, uh, Millicent, I, I think you're an idiot. Um, but you know, and it's wonderful get it, get uh, get letters like this because uh, then I can uh, then I can abuse dickheads like you. Oh, um, so uh, <laughs> no, but look, it it depends on what the context is. I think if it's in obviously in a drama and stuff, everybody has a bit of language in their life. Uh, this is a light-hearted panel show. We're meant to have a bit of fun, meant to be a bit of loose and free, and that's what makes it entertaining. If we uh, Oh God, heaven forbids if we didn't have a bit of looseness and freeness on this show, uh, we wouldn't have much of a show at all. So uh, look, uh, and uh, can I just say, I'm just amazed that you're so offended by this show, so offended, but you tune in each week and you've gone to the effort of giving us a letter. So obviously you're enthralled by, uh, by my filthy mouth and the language on this show. And I look forward to swearing at you again next time you're watching. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for your letter, Millicent, and we do encourage everyone to send us letters, but you, I know you will have a supporter in young Sinead Maripodi over here. I am probably the closest you'll get to a supporter, Millicent. I don't like swearing, I don't swear. I'll drop a friggin' or a flippin', or if I'm really angry, maybe I will swear, but I don't like to be sworn at. Would you say freak instead of the F word? Or oh, freak. I knew a guy who did freak, that Freak, maybe? More of a freak up. Okay, but yeah. I, do, I would drop the f bomb if it were in context, mm -hmm. and I was really, really angry. But, you're not but I would not when swear you at somebody, and no, I wouldn't be offended mm -hmm. if I saw it on on TV. I did see a program the other day that every second word was the f bomb, and I did end up turning it over because it was just a bit vulgar. So, no, Millicent, and I won't encourage you to flip over because we like having you watching. But we grew up as well with people like Elf Stewart, who said flame and mongrel. Mm. I didn't go around saying flame and mongrel mm. to people, so I don't think kids are learning from the TV. You know, you're a member of Gen Y, as am I. What, what do you think, you know, has encouraged you to, you know, maintain a clean, healthy mouth? I think my parents. The mm. old threat of you have your mouth washed out with soap. 
So it begins at home. It did begin at home. Did I still say that? Mm. Mum oh, did. I, I did expect to be washed out with soap. I, I had my... It was four more. I think my I sister did. got it. My <laughs> darling mother did that to <laughs> me <laughs> and I deserved it. Um, on, so. I, I love the roughness <laughs> of trying to jam it down my throat. Alex, do we swear too much on this show? Oh, Millicent, I agree with you 100%. Um, I had a friend of mine who was watching the show and we had a male that was actually sitting in this position and he mm -hmm. dropped the F-bomb a couple of times. And it was one t episode that she thought she'd let her eight-year-old son watch the show because he wanted to see me on it. And he was, um, she was mortified by it. Now, I agree with you. I don't agree. I don't think um, calling, uh, swearing on, on this show, at least, is acceptable. And um, we should curb how we talk to people. And just because you've got an opinion, you shouldn't have to. I mean, I like swearing, I swear. But I don't <laughs> swear on camera. I was gonna, oh, and, oh and I, Swan's pretty much time I'd, so far. I've I've never letter, said... letter, letter number one, I think you called him an idea. Yeah, you? well, that's yeah. not that's swearing. Not it's swearing. not a swear word. We're oh, talking okay. about, oh, we're talking it, about oh, words that are offensive. That. And this oh. woman has found you know, on this panel, offensive. And, you know, I apologise that you had to find that offensive. But, um, yeah, keep tuning in because we, we, we are, like John said, we like to have a lot of fun. Uh, uh, is there a line? Is there a line that we can draw? Do you well, think that? There's definitely a line, but what a load of crap you're all speaking. No, <laughs> are there yeah, some right. words like, that are okay how, and some What about your that dickhead that friend <laughs> letting an eight-year-old watch a show like this? Why not? What do you mean, why not? He wanted to see me on it. What about your children? Do they want to see Daddy on the show? I never let them watch this. Well... Actually, I didn't know anybody did watch this. Well, there you go. Oh, could I also just mm. say that we're on a light, light time time I slot. I was about so to talk about time. that. No, no kidding. In all seriousness, I, I do yeah, think we'll there's a line. That. I think, you know, but being a blokey bloke, I think you should save the vulgar for the pub with your mates. Yep. And especially, it's not, pro, it's not cool to swear, swear around uh, ladies and women. And, um, but I think there is a, definitely a place to, to you know, to, to express yourself in a vulgar way. But um, it's definitely not in front of... Uh, True ladies. Here is, and I don't know if there are any present here today. Um, we got to pick a winning letter that's going to win the limited edition sunglasses from Aussie Opticals. Alex, which letter? I liked um, letter two. Letter two, cool Matt. Guy. Yeah, the DNA. Letter two. Letter two, absolutely. Letter two, Matt Pody. Yeah, I'll go letter two. It's a unanimous decision. Stereotypes. You might not get a DNA test, but you are getting these fancy sunglasses that you can see before us here. Thank you very much to all of our panelists. We'll see you next time, Alex. Yes. Thank you very much, Matt. We will be back. A lot of fun. Tonight. And the Mayor of Bassin oh, Dean, we always call you in. Anybody who's offended by anything I've said tonight, I do apologise unreservedly. And you've been on the show the very first time, you know how you found it. The very first time and hope to come back. It's been excellent. I reckon we can probably have you back or we'll, we'll sneak a word into Mitch when he's back from his dirty little weekend. And, uh, <laughs> and hopefully I haven't been a terrible, terrible host for you. But it, with regards to the last letter, just for anyone wondering at home, uh, we are on a specific license, we can apparently say whatever we want, but we choose not to say the F word or the very noise C word. So thank you very, very much for your company this evening. Uh, I hope to be sitting back in the chair again at some point, but for now, good typing, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye for now.